In this video, we are going to talk all about routing in Angular. So in this last module video, we have created two different modules and we have loaded that modules in two different routes just to demonstrate how the lazy loading in an app Angular application works. You can check that video as well. And in this video, we are going to get deep into how routings can be defined in an Angular application and how we can use it to build a perfect application. And also we are going to talk about like what are the different kinds of routing generally used in Angular or any front end frameworks. So let's get started. Hey everyone, this is Kamran and I'm a full stack web developer. Through this video series, I'm teaching Angular JS to all. I end a week different video tutorial series on different web frameworks. So if you are new here, I would suggest you to hit the subscribe button down there and also like the video so that it will help me to grow as a YouTuber. Let's get started with the routing in Angular framework. So here we have defined two different routes in the main application, one for the admin module and one for the user. Uh, so let's get into one of the U module see its own routing so module user and in this we have this user routing file so here we can see we have defined a single route for this module let's now talk more about this routing so in this routing we have defined that whenever I, there will be a slash admin in the url you will be loading this module and for user we have kept it empty so another question is how exactly this routing works. So whenever there is a load of a URL in a web browser, it checks all the paths, whatever path matches with the URL, it loads that particular child or component or whatever we have defined. So your question is what happens when there is no match for that URL. So for that, we have to define our own URL, which handles the fallback of the URL matching. So here path we have to define for the fallback. So path for fallback is always double star and then you have to define what we have to do if we had this double star for this application we are going to redirect it to another path so i'm going to uh, redirect it to an empty path so let's say if i try to load something name as slash abcd then it will start matching with the paths and at the end if doesn't match with anything it will redirect it to the path of empty so this is your first lesson how you can handle the fallback of our routes and now let's try to get into the module and define some other components and routes in that now in this user module we already have defined a path which loads the user module now what we are going to do we are going to add some more path inside this module and that will be using to display our categories and subcategories of our e-commerce application so let's define our whole application in such a way that first on the first load of a user module we will get the list of all the categories and click of that categories we will get the list of subcategories so for that we are going to define two different routes for this so first will be the categories and then we can define a subcategory so now, now let me define two different children of this particular route so for that i'm going to add a children key and children will have be an array and inside array like we can define multiple routes so in this array also the route object will be the same uh, we have to define a path and corresponding to that path we have to define a component for the sake of simplicity i have already defined two different components inside this module category and subcategory you can learn how to create a components from my one of the previous videos of on components so here I have already defined that all I have to do is to import them. Let's import both the components over here. So for that I'm going to import uh, from slash component slash category slash category component. So this will be my category component and then I'm going to say category component. Let's let me save this and this category component I'm going to pass in this component. Uh, similarly i can have a subcategory component so let me define another uh, path inside the which will be our subcategory so for that i'm going to say path and i'm going to say path as subcategory and component will be subcategory now we just have to add a fallback as well so in this fallback will be same as the app component so let me add that star star 
and we can redirect it to anywhere so here also i'm going to just redirect to empty which will be our category control so what exactly are going to happen here so here whenever we are going to load this user module we are going to get this career category component as a default and then we can switch to subcategory oh sorry i guess i misspelled over here so subcategory i'm going to route to subcategory i will get this subcategory component over here so let's see if the output on the web browser how exactly it is looking right now so in the output we can see by the default when the category is loaded and if i add a slash subcategory over here then the subcategory works is loaded so now what we are going to do we are going to add a button inside a, this category to that button we are going to route to subcategory and one thing you have to keep in mind that in the user html you should add this router outlet to show the routing on the output and now on the category template in the category template where this category work is been displayed i'm going to add a routing method to the route to the subcategory so for that i'm going to remove this and i'm going to add a div element over here and inside that i'm going to write route to subcategory so this will route us to the subcategory and inside this i'm going to add a link which will route us to the subcategory so for that we have to add a input name as router link so use that in in this router link we have to pass the route path to which we have to route so for that i'm going to use a single inverted comma and inside that i'm going to pass subcategory now this router link is an input and in angular for each input you have to use a square bracket we will definitely learn about input and output of an angular application uh, one of the upcoming videos but here just you have to keep in mind you have to give this router link into a square bracket and now i'm going to do the same in the uh, subcategory component as well so in the subcategory i'm going to replace this whole thing with the subcategory and remove this subcategory and i'm going to empty this as well. on the click of this div we will be re redirected to the category so let's see the output on the browser so here you can see we have this route to subcategory on and when i click on this i am redirected to subcategory so till now you have learned how you can create multiple routes inside a module and how you can switch between those routes using our router link input now it's time for a bit of theory so now we are going to discuss types of routing which we are used in any web application especially in the angular so there are two different kind of routing which which we can use in angular we so we have server side rendering and a client side rendering. so what is the main difference between those so by default angular framework supports the server side rendering so this is the server side rendering which we use so in this the whole application routing is handled by the server when let's say when we load this url in a production so we have to handle this slash subcategory api in the server which will return the html content of this particular route so all the routes in the browser is handled by the server server side rendering have multiple benefits especially in the seo of the application so when we have to focus on the seo part we have to make sure that we are doing the server side rendering. but in our application we don't have to worry about the seo part right now we are going to use the client side rendering and in client side rendering what is the benefit so you don't have to worry about the defining apis for each of the routes instead of that you can simply let angular do that so angular will uh, handle all the routing part so visually what is the difference between the server side rendering and a client side rendering so in the angular we have this method of hash routing uh, to enable the client side rendering in the application so in this application we are going to do enable that let's see how we can do that so for that we have to open our a main app routing file so in this app routing file here where we have defined and pass this route for the actual routing purpose we have to add some parameters which will enable our hash so inside this we have to pass our object and in that we have to say use hash and this we will keep as true and this will help us to do the client side rendering for our application 
So now when we are going to see the output on the browser, you will see a difference. So what difference you can see right now? Yes, you can see a hash inside this URL. This hash defines that is a hash enabled and this is a client side rendering for an, your application. The rest of the things will remain same and work as expected. So once you click on this subcategory, the subcategory will be appended up after this hash. So in this video, you learn about, about different type of route things and how you can define different routes in your module and how to switch between them. I hope this video helped you a lot. Before leaving, I would suggest you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and like the video as well. That will help me to grow as a YouTuber. Happy coding everyone and see you in the next video.